Hi, welcome back to the shop. Thanks for stopping by. This week we're going to make one of two projects uh, for Mother's Day. Uh, next week will be another one that I made for Mother's Day, but I'm not going to do two in one video. I'll do one this week and one next week, but I'm going to make them both uh, today before Mother's Day. Um, this is a piece of maple burl. Um, came from Washington or Oregon, I believe. Um, nice, pretty, pretty nice uh, figure in this when we get it down. Got all kinds of nice stuff going on, on the outside here. So what I'm going to do, I've stolen a, a uh, costume bracelet and I need to take a little bit of this around here. There's enough in this piece right here to make a bracelet. And then I'm going to make a pendant out of this. And this will be next week's video of the pendant. So I'm going to cut some of this away here. There is a bark inclusion here, but it's going to be in the center kind of looking down through and it looks like it's going to come out in the center so I should be okay. So I'm just going to knock some of this off. You can see where the tree went through here. There's not a lot of figure in the middle. So I'm going to take this little piece of burl out of here. I'm going to save this little piece for a project down the road and um, we'll get down the lathe and we'll see how we make out. All right, so I got this hot milk glued on. I put a bead on the faceplate itself and a bead around the faceplate. You say this is thicker than I need, but I want to make sure that I get the best, the best uh, figuring out of it. So we're just going to round it up using a bowl gouge. I'm going to take this down enough to just to get this little, there's a little blemish here, and one here. So that looks pretty good there now, and it's quite symmetrical. I'm going to sand this up, and then we'll cut out the inside. We'll start with 180 grit. That's 
that's a nice wall thickness. Now I'm going to hollow this out. I'm not going to go all the way through because I'll have nothing holding this to my waste block here on the, on the lathe, on the faceplate, <clears throat> because there's glue. I'm going to cut out the glue that's attached to this on the back side, and I'll be, and I don't have enough faith in this little bit that's around the outside edge, so I'm going to hollow this almost all the way through. I may go all the way through in the center, but I won't go all the way through on the outside. I have this chiseled ground so that when I'm at a 90 degree angle, perpendicular to the headstock, that that will work on the dovetail on my four jaw chuck so that I can reverse it and put it in the four jaw chuck and finish the other side uh, from outside to inside the same way that I did this one. So I'm going to turn it in reverse and put that profile on it. I'm doing this in reverse just because it's much more comfortable to cut it uh, from this side. Um, I can stand up straight and look in on it and see what I'm doing real easily rather than uh, reaching out over the lathe bed and, and kind of looking back in toward myself. So now that I've got the wall thickness that I want and that dovetail angle cut, I'm just going to go back in with the Easywood Tools number one hollower and I'm going to make the wall thickness as consistent down through it without affecting that angle for the dovetail. So I got a nice, pretty nice, even thickness right here. So I'm going to sand this up the same as I did the outside. I won't show you that, but I'll start at 180 again. I'll work my way up to 800, and uh, then I'm going to part it off, and we'll turn around the four jaw chuck, and I'll bring you back when I'm parting it off. All right, so the inside's all sanded up here now. So I'm just going to part some of this glue off. I'm just going to take a diamond tool, and we're going to cut a little bit of glue, just glue. That's why I didn't turn it all the way through. Well, I'll get more of it through than I thought I was going to. All right, so we're gonna mount this in the four jaw chuck and we're gonna turn this off and make it nice and clean. All right, so we're all turning around now. We're expanding on the four jaw chuck. You don't wanna put a whole lot of tension on that, just enough to hold it. And again, it's important to cut the right if you're gonna use a four jaw chuck with a dovetail to hold this thing at the end without marking it. Um, you need to make sure you cut the right angle. My camera had gotten out of focus enough that I had to cut that little chunk of video out, about 30 seconds of it, just cleaning up that last tiny thin strip of wood that was on this outside edge. So just picking it up here from, from where it came back into focus.
Okay, toss. Again, I'm gonna start out here probably 120 grit because I got a little tiny bit of tear out there in the center. So I'm gonna sand this from 120 up to 800, and then we're gonna take it off, and then we are going to dye it. All right, so this is all finished up now. It's, it's really nice and smooth, and um, you can put a finish on this now. Uh, you can spray it with lacquer, do whatever you choose. Uh, but I'm going to take a chance, and I'm going to use some Hampshire Sheen Intrinsic Plum. Um, I'm going to make this, put it into a thing for my air, for my uh, airbrush. I'm just going to use Q-tips to apply it. But I'm going to make this purple, and that may ruin it, and it may not. I'm not sure. So I gave this one coat of the uh, the color, and then I took a, a clean paper towel and just wiped the excess off, and that gave me just about the right coverage. So you can see there's very little of this on my fingers. When I'm holding it on the inside, this stuff dries super fast and I really like it for that. Um, you can get this from Woodsley Summercraft if you're in Canada. He's the distributor for this product. So I'm gonna, and if you look down the, in the comments, you'll see a link to Woodsley Summercraft. So if you, use, um, if you use Hampshire Sheen or Yorkshire Grit or Mylands products, Rob Summerlin, who owns your uh, Woodsley Summercraft, is a Canadian distributor for all those products. He's a really good guy. He's a wood turner himself, and he also has a YouTube channel. So check him out. And if you do happen to order a product from him, please let him know that you heard it here. There you can see the grain through that really nicely. I like that. Excellent. Okay, so I'm going to let this dry overnight, and I will uh, put some UV resin on it tomorrow. So I put two coats of Mylan sanding sealer on this, just uh, squirted it on a paper towel and wiped it on the inside and outside and um, allowed it to dry for a couple of minutes. It dries very quickly. And then I put this uh, Illuminate UV resin on the inside and around the edges. And I've taken it outside in the sunlight because uh, I don't have a UV lamp and uh, got it to cure outside. It took about 10 minutes for it to cure. And uh, now I'm just going to put the coat on the outside. Uh, the first coat on the outside and you can see some of that here i found this stuff really nice um, in terms of how it leveled out on the piece and um, when i got it on uh, and took it back outside to cure the outside i actually slid this over top of an aerosol can and i just rotated it uh, by hand for the 10 minutes it took to harden up and uh, it actually come out really nicely i was really pleased with it so i'll uh, probably do a, a better video of UV resin finishes at some point in time uh, because this one as you can see you got a really nice in focus hand and not so great on the uh, on the piece itself but as you can see I'm just brushing it in um, and it's leveling itself off really nicely you're gonna want a really good light when you do this especially in a dark piece uh, because the only way you can see any defects is in the reflection of the piece so if you're still with me thanks for sticking around I really appreciate it Thanks again to everyone who watches the videos and subscribes to the channel. I appreciate that a ton as well. If you like what you saw and you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. It doesn't cost you anything, and it certainly does help the channel a lot. So I'm going to leave some pictures up at the end, and we will see you next time.